Hi there, my name is Ziggy, also known as Zigfit Mama, and I've just given birth to my third baby. Today, what we're going to be doing is adjusting our yoga practice for any abdominal separation. This is how I've been adjusting my practice as I get back into things. Um, and so first, we're actually just going to be talking about some muscles because I want you to be engaging these muscles as we practice today. And I want you to be thinking about your core and your pelvic floor and reconnecting to your body. So first off, let me just grab my pelvis. So first off, we're going to be thinking about the bandhas. And in particular, we're going to be thinking about our root block. All right. And so what we're talking about is our pelvic floor muscles. So if these are my hips, the musculature is going to be our anus. That's where we pass wind from. That's where we do bowel movements from. We're going to be lifting from the vagina. So that's where if you have a vaginal delivery, baby exits from. It's where penetrative sex happens. If you've used a tampon before or a menstrual cup, the cue today is going to be thinking about lifting a tampon up inside. Or you can just think about engaging the vagina muscles, lifting up. And then the last one is the urethra. So that is the muscles that help control urine and the flow of urine. Um, and this is where we get urinary incontinence, where people um, leak urine without wanting to. Very common in vaginal delivery or just in pregnancy in general. So just because you had a C-section, you may still have some urinary incontinence. And so we're going to think about lifting these muscles. So just try it with me now. Take a nice big inhale. Your pelvic floor should relax or do nothing, okay? And then as you exhale, we're going to think about lifting through the anus, the vagina, and then the urethra. So we're trying to isolate those separate parts. And I like to think of the pelvic floor like an escalator. So when we come up, it's going anus, vagina, urethra. And then when you inhale, you let those muscles go. And right now, you might not have much sensation, and that's okay. If you can, focus on anus, vagina, urethra, fantastic. If not, just think of the vagina cue. So just think about lifting through the vagina and then letting go. Lifting through the vagina and then letting go. So now when we think of this from a bandha perspective, from the root lock, where I want you to have some contact with your mat. Okay, so take a seated position that feels comfortable for you. It could be an easy sit, it could be cross-legged, it could be lotus. And all we're going to do first is just connect to that root. So connecting to our pelvic floor and the physical floor. So we're going to do that first just by rocking and rolling. So I want you, you can have hands on the floor, totally fine, to rock all the way onto your tailbone. Find that bony landmark. You're going to rock forwards all the way onto your pubic bone. You might not be able to feel it in a position this position that's okay and then you're just going to do that back and forth so a pelvic tilt essentially tailbone pubic bone and what you really should feel is your sit bones okay so what we're going to do is we're going to think about lifting all of that musculature that's in that diamond shape from the pubic bone down to the tailbone so we're going to inhale, nothing happens, the pelvic floor should naturally relax. We're going to engage the root lock. So bringing anus, vagina, urethra inwards, belly might draw inwards, and then inhale, let it go. Exhale, anus, vagina, urethra lifting upwards, belly draws inwards, inhale, let it go. And you might not be able to hold for that long, but what we're going to try and do is give percentages to that, um, that bandha today, the mula bandha. We're going to think about giving maybe 10%, see if we can build up to 50%. What I don't want you to be doing is giving 100% and trying to hold 100% at all times because that's not the way the pelvic floor works. The second thing that we're going to do today is some kapalabhati breathing. So this is a quick exhalation and the belly is going to draw inwards very fast. I like to do this on my knees. I find it easier to connect to that breathing. And rather than making it a forceful inhalation, all I want you to focus on doing is your exhalation. So if we just imagine first that we're going to blow out a candle like this, 
it's a quick snapping in of the abdomen. It's not recommended in pregnancy, but this can be a nice way just to start engaging those muscles back in the belly. So first, we're just going to do a couple of deep breaths. Inhale. Exhale through the nose. And just notice where your breath is first. Inhale. Exhale through the nose. Now we're going to try that quick, short breath out first with our mouth. Then I'm going to get you to close the mouth. So, hands on the belly, close the mouth, manage it okay, great job. And so you might feel it more down the back of the throat. You can close the eyes for this. What we're going to try and do is just three rounds. First round, we're just going to do 10 exhalations, second round 20, and then third round 30. If it feels too fast for you, if you have um, any breathing issues like asthma normally, take a slower pace. Or if you just feel like you're getting lightheaded, take a slower pace. Do some just inhalations and exhalations, inhalations and exhalations. And then see if you can do Kapalabhati another day. Alrighty, here we go. So first, just deep inhale through the nose, close the eyes. Exhale through the nose. And begin. Eight, nine, ten. Let it go. Exhale. Inhale. Few inhales and exhales. Noticing the sensation in the body. Exhale fully. And begin. Twenty. Five, four, three, two, one. Let it go. Inhale all the way to the top of the skull. Exhale, let it go. A few inhalations and exhalations. Noticing, noticing the sensations in the body. All right, we're going to do the final round, round of 30. Inhaling fully. Exhale, let it go. Begin for 30. Four, three, two, one, let it go. Inhale to the top of the head. Exhale, let it go. Deep breaths. Noticing the sensations in the body. Breathing at your own pace. Flutter the eyelids open. All right, that's pelvic floor work and breath work done for today. Now we're just going to begin by modifying the sun salutations. So find yourself uh, in a standing position at the top of your mat. Have blocks nearby if you need them. We're going to start off with just some sun salutations. So based on your pregnancy, how you were feeling, how hips are feeling, take a comfortable standing position, whether that's feet together, toes together, Maybe a little space between the heels, but the toes spread apart, rooting into the mat. Or you can have a slightly hip distance apart um, stance, but just see how it feels. So I want you to just look down, make contact with your big toe, and lift the other toes if you can, spreading them. And then place the other toes onto the floor. Feel that root and now relax the toes. Don't grip onto the mat. Slightly just do a few pelvic tilts, so arching and tucking, and see if you can bring that sacrum down and find a nice neutral position. From there, we're going to lift up tall, roll the shoulders down and back, um, fingertips spread, facing forwards, 
chin lifted ever so slightly and close the eyes. Just take a minute here to find your center. Connect to your breath in and out through the nose. Yoga is about connecting the breath, the mind, and the body. And after we have babies, it can take a while to connect all of those things together, whether that's just connecting with your mind and one single thought, being present, or whether that's connecting with your new body, how it's changed after holding and carrying, loving your little one. Now from here, just shift the weight ever so slightly into the toes, shift it into the heels, and try and find a mid-ground between those two. We're going to take the arms up overhead. Inhale. For this first round, we're going to take everything a little bit slowly and hold each position for a second. Arms are extended up overhead, but now I just want you to bring the shoulders down and back, giving you a nice, long, straight spine. Now, lift the chin, look up towards the fingertips. Be gentle with the neck. We're going to exhale, hinging the hips backwards. Arms out in front of us if you can manage it. Slight bend in the knees if you need to. And then hands come down towards the mat. They may not touch. This is a nice place to have blocks. Or top of the knee or the shins. You find your position. And now I want you to let the back go. So rounding slightly through the back. We're just going to take your right hand and place it over onto the left elbow. Left hand holds the right elbow. And we're going to do a nice big dead hang here. Now let's think about our abdominal separation. So belly is just loose. It's hanging on to the um, thighs. Let's see if we can engage that pelvic floor, anus, vagina, urethra. Lifting up, drawing the belly in away from our thighs as if the belly is afraid of them. Now here, let your head hang. Do a few nods. Do a few shakes and just let it go. Let yourself be heavy. Let gravity take you. And then placing the hands back down towards the floor, extending. We're going to inhale. We're going to do a halfway lift. So fingertips. Stay on the floor or they can extend forwards, lifting the chin, looking forwards. Exhale. We're going to take a step back one leg at a time. So whichever leg feels more comfortable, you're going to take a step back. Nice, long position, kind of like in a lizard stretch, elongating the chest, pressing into the palms. Extend the right leg back. This is a high plank. Take it straight to the knees if you don't feel secure or hold for one second. Drawing that belly in, ribs and hips towards each other, slightly rounding through the upper back. So we're drawing those rectus muscles towards each other, feeling no pressure. If we feel pressure, we take it down to the knees straight away. From here, instead of a chaturanga, we're going to go knees, chin, and chest. So knees have contact with the floor. Just check in that shoulders are right over the wrists. We're going to shoot our chin towards the mat, placing them in between our hands, bending the elbows in towards the side of the body, not outwards. Chin, and then chest. If you are breastfeeding, this may feel a little bit painful or sore on the breasts. If you need to, just go straight into lying flat. Maybe place a towel underneath. From here, all we're going to do is we're going to elongate the legs, we're going to lift up and then peel the chest away. But as you peel, what I want you to do is draw the belly away from the mat, just lifting through the upper back, looking forwards. Let's see if we can take a few deep breaths here. Now see if you can expand the rib cage. Try and have as little weight in the hands as possible. Exhale, come down. Tuck the chin in. Scoop your belly in. We're trying not to arch through the back as we come up. So you're going to slightly round the back. Protect the belly. Pressing yourself up. All fours position. From here, we're going to press back into our downward facing dog. So inhale for one. Let your belly relax. 
Exhale, draw the belly in. We're going to tuck the toes and press back into our downward facing dog, looking towards the toes, the knees, or the belly button, whatever you can see. You can have a slight bend in the elbows here if that helps. It might be the first time you're taking pressure back into the wrists or shoulders. Think about pressing the heels towards the floor and focus on that deep breath. So inhaling through the nose, exhaling, draw the belly in towards the spine, lifting through that pelvic floor, inhaling. See if you can hold on to the pelvic floor. Let's go 10%. And then when you exhale, draw pelvic floor back up to about 50%. Inhale, expand through the rib cage, 10% on the pelvic floor. Exhale, draw pelvic floor in even more, 50%. One more breath, inhale. So on this final exhale, we're going to look forwards. We're going to step our right foot forward, left foot forward, round through the spine, draw the belly in away from the thighs again. Inhale, look up, bring the arms up and around. Look towards the ceiling, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, hands come down. All right, we're going to take everything a little bit faster, more of a flow. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hinge the hips back, long back, rounding through the back now, looking towards the toes or the knees, whatever you can see. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back, draw the belly in. Exhale, you're going for a high plank or straight to your knees. Hold the high plank for one second if you can. Knees, chest, chin, elbows close to the body. Wiggle through, belly on the floor, lifting up for our baby cobra. Inhale, exhale, drop belly in even more. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, we're going to push back into our downward dog. Five breaths. Now think about that pelvic floor. Inhale. Expand through the rib cage, 10%. Exhale, 50%. Inhale. Exhale, 50%. Lifting through the pelvic floor. Three more breaths in your own time. Slight bend in the elbows if you need it. Heels towards the floor. Slight rounding through the lower portion of your back. Pressing the chest towards the thighs, but drawing that belly in, protecting that core so we're not flaring through the ribcage. Final exhale. Look forwards. Walk the feet towards the hands. Rounding through the spine. Look towards the floor of your knees. Inhale, arms come up. And then exhale, down by your sides. We're going to do three more rounds. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, shoot it back. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, take a step back. Plank position, hold for one second. Knees, chest, chin. So when we do our upward facing dog, most people focus just on the back. I want you instead to think about your core. So you're going to inhale for me. Let your belly really hang, feel that. Exhale, you're going to draw the belly in. Now I want you to feel that. Feel the strength in the core. Lifting through the pelvic floor. Any back issues, just go straight back down into your baby cobra. Now press through the heels of the hands. Now lift the chin. And then exhale, tuck the toes. Press back to our downward facing dog. Look towards the toes. Five breaths. Think of your pelvic floor and your core. So as you inhale, I want you to think about breathing wide into the rib cage, not into the belly. So belly will naturally draw inwards. And then when you exhale, you're forcing the breath out. The belly is drawing in even more. So it's like pelvic floor and breath want to meet each other in the middle. When I think about lifting the pelvic floor, I think about it meeting my belly button internally. Exhale. Final breath. Exhale, look forward. Walk the feet towards the hands. Look to the knees, round the back, draw the belly in. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, hands down. Final round, you choose your cobra 
for your upward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. Hinge the hips. Inhale. Halfway lift. Exhale. Walk it back. Plank position or knees on the floor. Knees. Chest. Chin. Upward facing or baby cobra. Draw that belly in. Exhale. Tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Five breaths. One. Exhale. Lift through pelvic floor. Two. Exhale. Final one, exhale, look forward, and then walk the feet towards the hands. Round through the spine, look to the knees or the toes, whatever you can see. Inhale, coming up, exhale, let it go. Brilliant. So let's bring it down to the mat. We're going to do a couple of things to help strengthen the core. First one is a... Um, an Arda Pravatasana, so a tabletop position, an inverse tabletop. So first things first, hand position. We are going to find a position that feels most comfortable for you. It doesn't matter about the full expression of the posture. Mummies tend to get a lot of wrist and thumb issues from repetitive movements. So you choose a position that feels supportive for you. I like fingertips forwards, and I like to line it up by putting my thumbs right where my bum is, and then pressing up and forwards that way. Some people like the hands to the side. Some people like it back. Whatever feels good for you. Foot position. So you find your sweet spot, basically. I'm going to line my thumbs up with my bum. I'm going to think about rolling the shoulders down and back. Feet aren't too far away from me, but they aren't too close that I can't lift up. You want to find a nice midway position. Check that your toes are pointing forwards and not outwards. We're going to do one inhale here. We're going to exhale, lift the hips, pressing into the feet. And then here, I want you to notice the position of my stomach. So I'm not letting my um, back arch. I'm slightly tucking the pelvis and drawing the belly down. Look up towards the ceiling. And instead of letting the head go back, what I want us to think about is looking down towards the pubic bone, drawing the belly in. And then as you come down, you're going to tuck and round the spine. So tailbone comes first. So that's different from if I were to arch my back and then arch it as I come down. See the difference there? And I still have quite a belly. I just gave birth so a couple of weeks ago, not yesterday. So we're going to exhale. Think about drawing that belly down. And what we're doing is we're shortening the length between the rib and the hip. So have that in mind. We're going to do five of these. Inhale. Exhale, lifting up, opening the chest, shoulders are away from the ears. Inhale, tuck and round through the spine. Exhale, lift up, press into the heels, open the chest, look towards the pubic bone. Inhale, tuck and round. Exhale, hold, squeezing the bum, lifting the chest, belly down. Inhale. Two more. Exhale, lift up. Knees pointing forwards, not out. Belly down. Lift through the pelvic floor. Inhale. Second rounds come down. Last one. Exhale, lift up. Two more breaths. Belly down. Inhale. Tuck and round through the spine. Let it go. Okay. Take the wrists in the opposite direction of what you just did. So mine reflects this way. I'm going to press the backs of my hands together, bringing my elbows down. Okay? Beautiful. We're going to take it up a notch. And so we're going to see if that felt a little bit too challenging, don't go for the next one. You can always try a different uh, hand position. See how that feels too. So you're putting pressure into the wrists in different ways and at different angles. So now we're going to try it with straight legs. And then we're going to take it up a notch and see if we can do some leg lifts. So first, let's just do the straight legs. I'm going to flip my hands this time and just practice a different hand position. All righty. So this time, bum slightly in front of the hands. My hands aren't going to be right next to me. Feet are out in front of us. I'm going to point my toes. 
Gonna lift my chest. I'm gonna exhale, lift up. See if you can hold for one, two, three, four, five. Tuck and rounds come down. Really nice. Try a different hand position. Let's try to the side or keep going with what you're doing. Inhale, prepare to lift. Exhale, belly down. Lift through the chest. Good. Exhale, come on down. Last one, inhale, exhale and lift. Squeezing the bum. And then back down. Keep the breath flowing throughout. But when I say the breath is flowing, I don't want the belly rising and falling, rising and falling. I want your belly to be drawing inwards and you lifting through the pelvic floor. If you need to take a big, deep breath, think about doing it through the rib cage wide. Alrighty, we're gonna try that again, but now we're gonna do it by lifting one leg at a time. If that was a little bit too challenging for your arm and core strength, stay in the tabletop. If the wrists are hurting, give yourself a little break. But me speaking right now is a big break. Alrighty, so hand position. Choose your hand position. Inhale, exhale, we're gonna lift up. And from here now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and lift one leg, just ever so slightly off the floor, and then bring it back down. Inhale, exhale, lift with the exhale. One more on either side. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And then coming back down, inhale, rest. So, couple of options. I held throughout. What you can do is come down in between. I know it's a lot on the wrists. So, you're going to inhale, come up, lift one leg, bring it back down, bring the whole butt down. Inhale, come up, lift one leg back down, whole butt down. Inhale, up, down, whole butt down. Inhale, butt down. Okay, let's do one more. You choose your option. Now, if that was fine, we're going to try and bring the knee in. So we're going to inhale, exhale, come up, lift one leg, bring the knee in, bring it back down, either bring the butt down or we're going for the other leg. Exhale, so it's a crunch. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Bring it back down and rest. Okay, great job. Last one we're gonna do is Navasana, boat pose. But we're not gonna ever take it to full Navasana today, especially for our DR. So our uh, abdominal separation. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold from the back of the legs. We're going to tuck our pelvis, engage through the pelvic floor. One breath. Inhale, exhale. We're going to bring one leg up. Inhale, exhale. Lift through the pelvic floor. Engage the core. Bring the other leg up. We're not going to shift from here. You're going to support yourself with your, um, with your hands. And you're just going to think about connecting to that core. So lift through the pelvic floor. Exhale, draw the belly in even more. Inhale, through the ribcage wide. Exhale, draw ribcage down towards the hip bones. Inhale. Exhale, pull the pelvic floor up and in. Belly draws in. Inhale, breathe wide. Exhale, belly in. Okay, now let's see. If you can take one hand out, let's see if you can take the other hand out. Breathe. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Hands. Feet. We did it. Okay. And another way that you can adjust it is by taking the knees further away from the body. But as you can see, I begin to arch straight away. And so if I can't maintain that sort of slightly tucked position, it's just not appropriate. Okay, thank you for practicing with me today. I hope that this is educational and it'll help you adjust your practice. Like, comment, subscribe.